just work one pass from here as well. So we spent a lot in the last week of, uh, of uh, working from reverse Del Hiva. So let's work how we approach passing this position. Especially in no gi, because it's a bit different. Okay, because any time in the gi, like in the gi, there's two controls I can get that really help me when I'm trying to pass. One is that I can grab the pants here like this in the gi, and the other one is the um, I can get a good collar grip. So that lets me like do like long step sort of passes, and because I've got a hold of the collar, they can really pull in. Even a even if I get a good cross face in no gi, like Craig push me away and like make distance, like it's so hard for me to keep that when I'm here. So I want you to approach in no gi a little different to perhaps how you do it in the gi. Um, so we're really, when I'm trying to pass uh, the reverse tail here we go, which you run into a lot if someone's got a good guard, um, in Nogi, I'm really trying to get like into this space here. So I want to clear this leg and I want to kind of get in front of Craig's torso with like good control. So um, the way I, I'm going to do that, I'm still going to sort of start trying to clear this foot. Um, but I want to like... I'm probably not doing the best example of it right now. Um, what I would actually do, I try and bring my hips pretty close like this. So when I clear, it makes it like more difficult for Craig to get that leg back in on my, on my hip. If it's here like this, if it's closer to him. If it's like out here, it's very easy for him to for his foot to come in. And then as soon as that's there, anything I'm doing that is bothering Craig, he can just push me away and I lose my control. So I want to make sure like once I've cleared that leg, my hips are closer and it's harder for him to get that back to deal with that. And you can see I'm driving off my left leg to kind of drive my hips back in that direction. Okay? So that's usually the first step. Once we've cleared that, I now want to try and get my hand inside um, to block that leg. It can be here or it can be dropping down here like this. Try and bring your leg back in now. Craig. And it should be difficult for him to do. Okay. There's a big problem here because I need to start using my cross face. But if I go for a cross face now, uh, let, let's say, let's say I even get it, right? Craig's got a good chance of recovering his bottom leg back together. This happens heaps. And you end up in closed guard when you've gone for a, for a cross face. So you can have to do a little adjustment here. So we go back to the start. When you clear the leg and block the hip, but instead of going straight for the cross face, my left hand's going to be focused on this leg, not to let him recover it. So I'm going to try and work off this reverse de la Hiva grip a bit. So step back, I'm going to start putting my knees down to here. Recover this leg now, correct? It should still be hard for him to get that. And now this leg's trapped too. Recover that leg. Don't have to bother me. Okay. So can you see that? His knee's free here. So I can't pass like this yet. He's going to recover his guard. I need to clear that leg before I start to come into the, to the half guard here. Now, uh, I think this is more, it's more and more important in no gi. As I said, the cross face is, is less uh, useful. So don't think of it about as a cross face in terms of like I'm trying to put pressure on his head. Anytime I do this, I let his hips free and he starts recovering his, his zig guard. So think about using your shoulder to pin their shoulder like that. So I'm, I'm using like, you'd call this a cross face, but I'm not really applying much pressure at all to, to Craig's head here. Um, and I use my right hand to control the hip escape. So when he tries to return, get his hips back in, to feel to move the hips. All right, from here, I want to start freeing my knee. So uh, let's say he's crossed his feet around my knee and my knee's trapped. I want to use my elbow to get his hip escape a little bit and then I'm going to go back to the hip. So now my knee's free. I'm getting ready to start attacking with the knee cut. But I want to stay across his body as I do this. So watch this. My knees up, I'm going to switch my hips, and I'm going to keep pressure. And now I can still drive through my left shoulder to keep his shoulders flat, and start kicking my left leg to free my knee. Uh, my foot, sorry. sorry. I talked a lot there. I'll go through just uh, the main details of that. Okay, so we're going to clear the leg like this, and we're going to work to get inside this, this hip here, like that. Okay? Well just make sure your, your hips are nice and close so when he tries to recover that leg, that's difficult. Now we're going to be focusing on this knee. So we're going to sort of move away a little bit now and rotate to, to pinch past that leg. Come through, cross face, but use your shoulder pressure as opposed to head pressure. Okay, I'm not doing this. I'm cutting across the body and I'm blocking his hip from hip escaping. From here, free your knee, 
Come back to the hip, screw your hips away, and we're gonna rotate into a knee cut. Once that knee's cutting through, all my pressure goes to keep his shoulder from turning in towards me. Turn towards me, Chris. Yeah, so his spine's pretty rotated, he doesn't have much power here. My left foot, I'm gonna keep the bottom leg, bring my legs, and we pass. Any questions on that? Once you clear, like, second set, once you clear that first leg and yeah. you go and attend the second leg, that's yeah. what the reverse stellar hemo, can he not just, like, sort of poke with his arms and, like, block you? Ah, uh, from cross facing him or from. Yeah, from, from reaching for the cross face. Like when yeah, so, uh, so we're here, like yeah. this, and I go here. Craig's gonna be blocking for sure. Yeah. Okay, so that's where I've gotta, like, I'll usually swim my arm in a little bit. So, block. Like, I'll be here like this, I'll tend to sort of go like this, and then. I can come here, I can come through. Like I've just got to find a, an angle that I can yeah. cover. The longer you wait, the more they're gonna chance they got to recover. So that's where you gotta be pretty quick. Remember, like, this is one way, so like I can go cross body like I just did. I can if I if I get the chance, like I'll, I'll get uh, like a good cross face here. Sometimes as well, maybe he's pushing like too much like that, and I'll get like a an underhook on this side and I'll start driving up. So there, is, there are a lot of options like, to go from there. Alright, let's have a go. Yeah. That, that cross face you're doing, is it mostly your forearm that's turning his head? Is no, it's, I'm not even, it's like pretty much shoulder pressure. Is there much pressure on your hip? No. No. Do so it here. I'll be like, most of my weight is through here. Okay. But it's going through his chest rather yeah. than like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about turning his, like, I'm, might be, not be on his shoulder, but try and turn your shoulders back in towards me. That's what I'm trying to stop, yeah? Sometimes I'll even put my head on the mat if I have to, just to, to lean forward enough. Alright, let's have a go. Three, two, one.